Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to discuss few of the basic difference between a message broker and message queue. You must have heard this about these tools, right? Uh, Kafka, RabbitMQ, Amazon SMS, Nats. All those are all into the category of either message queue or message broker or some of them have the features of both, okay? So while both the message queues and or message broker are pub sub mechanism that you have heard, right? Both are messaging patterns used for communication between services, different services, but they serve different purposes and they operate differently also. For example, if you discuss about message queues, so a message queue is a basically, you know, messaging system where the messages are sent to a queue and are processed by a single consumer. So basically how the things work is there will be a producer. If I just draw it here, let's say this is our producer. All right. Let me just reduce the size also. And let's say this is my message queue. Okay. So there will be a producer. So the producers will send message to the message queue. And let's say this is my message. And there will be a single consumer. Okay. Let's say this is my consumer. All right. And it will just consume the message. And as soon as the message is consumed by the, by the consumer, the message is removed from the queue. So that's how this messaging queue works. What does it ensure? It ensures basically a guaranteed delivery of your message to the desired consumer and only one consumer basically. And if you see basically this message queues are used for you know task scheduling or load balancing or work distribution those kind of things. We'll discuss about the use cases in a while. One simple example of message queue is let's say you are ordering something in a restaurant. The customer comes and let's say he places the order. Now the order is sent to the message queue. This is the customer order and a single worker let's say a consumer picks up the order and processes the order and once the order is processed it is removed from the queue. There are different tools or technologies that operate on the concept of message queue like we have rabbit mq amazon sqs uh, apache active mq is also there right all these things are part of message queue now what does a message broker mean so message broker are basically you know based on pub sub or publish subscribe uh, technology so it's basically kind of you know you are broadcasting different kind of message or events so in a pub sub mechanism how the it works is the same message is uh, broadcasted to multiple subscribers so there will be multiple subscribers like this so instead of one there will be one or more it's not like there will be more than one it can be one or more than one but let's say this is my message broker now how is it different from message queue and what is the key characteristic of a message broker now in message brokers what happens the producers will send message to a topic so there will be different kind of topic i'll create a detailed video on kafka it basically transfers the messages uh, on topics so there will be topics in a message broker uh, producer will uh, you know produce messages to the topic it, you can think of topic as a channel okay to the topic messages are produced and whichever consumers have subscribed to that topics let's say inside this we have a topic like this okay this is my topic p1 this is my topic one inside this some one message has been uh, produced so now whichever consumers there can multiple consumers as i told whichever consumers have subscribed to that top particular topic they will receive the same message so all of them will receive the message the cool thing is the message is not destroyed from the queue it remains available for all subscribers and it is not removed from the queue this is basically used for event driven architectures where multiple system need to react to the same event right let's say you have multiple services or multiple microservices that need to you know act on this message queue messages that that, that has been said by the publisher so in that case event driven architecture this kind of technique is used for example talk of a given company moved up or moved down right so that information has to be said to multiple things let's say to mobile devices to news websites to trading websites or trading boards apps lot of consumers are there for a for that particular single information right so this is where the message broker or pop up mechanism comes into play a subscriber can act on the message independently as they want and there are popular technologies that uh, support this uh, pub sub mechanism. There are Apache Kafka, Google, Google also has pub sub, and AWS SNS also supports pub sub mechanism. Now, if you uh, discuss about some of the key differences between the message queue and message broker, there are a few key differences. First, in, first one is the delivery model. The message queue works on a one to one or point to point communication. One will produce the message and one will consume the message. But in a pub sub architecture or pub sub mechanism, it's basically a one to many, it's kind of broadcasting, right? Now, if we talk about a message li lifetime, the messages are removed once they're consumed in message queues. However, in pub, pub sub mechanism, they remain available for multiple subscribers. And if you discuss about a consumer count, there are a single consumer per message uh, in case of message queue. But in case of message broker, there are multiple consumer per, per message, as you already saw.
So example system is basically for message queue level order processing or background running jobs, right? Um, but for message broker, the examples could be livestock updates where real time alerts updates has to be sent to the multiple users, multiple consumers basically, right? Now, so what are some of the actual use cases, the practical real life use cases of these two? We can use message queues for task scheduling. Let's say you have 10, 10 or 20 tasks to be performed by multiple workers. So you can put it in the queue and the workers will come and consume the task one by one and perform the task. For load balancing, messages, message queue are a great option to use. Basically by distributing tasks across multiple worker instances, so you can actually balance the load among multiple workers and get your task done through the message queue. So once a task is picked up by a particular worker, that won't be available for any other worker to do. Also the third use case of message queue will be email and notification services. You want to send particular email and email or notification or personal notification to a certain users so you can rely on messages queues. So based on your requirement, based on the need of your application, you, you should decide which one to use for what. There is another type of you know interesting tool called NATS which supports another type of uh, communication pattern called request response. So just like we have PubSub in message broker, we have request response in basically NATS. So, so NATS is a tool, it also supports you know PubSub definitely but it comes with a unique request response communication methodology which is often used in microservices and distributed system. This request response messaging technique, it allows a client to send request and receive a direct reply. It's, it's kind of how REST APIs work, but it's little bit different from REST API also. It supports low latency communication. It doesn't require you to create a new TCP connection for each of your requests. You can maintain a sing, single persistent connection with the with the messaging platform and you'll be able to you know get a direct reply for each, each of your requests. So if I show you a code, one of the sample code of you know NATS request response cycle, let's say basically you are uh, connected to a uh, NAT server, okay, and you you are subscribed you have subscribed to a particular uh, channel there, or a, or a topic there, okay, and you are passing a callback there, which will be you know uh, a function which will publish a message, alright. So as soon as someone comes and sends a request on that channel, immediately you see that you you are receiving the response based on this responder callback that you have, right, and on the channel it publishes the reply so that's how this request response cycle works in case of nats so it's uh, it's used for direct reply where you need ultra low latency direct reply communication between services it's obviously faster than http based uh, rest api communication the main thing is if you need low latency lightweight messaging between multiple services now nats is the way to go it can act as a you know a replacement for your http communication between inter microservices communication there are some difference between HTTP and REST, uh, NATS basically. NATS is basically, you know, it's a TCP based messaging protocol while our REST API are, you know, it's, it's basically based on the HTTP protocol which is nothing but REST over TCP connection, right? Performance wise, NATS are ultra low latency messaging uh, technique but REST API involves higher latency because there is, you know, when the client tries to acquire connection, TCP connection with the server, they do a do a handshaking so that adds up a latency. So performance wise NATS is better. Scalability wise NATS obviously supports millions of messages per second while uh, REST API is limited right. It's limited by the HTTP overhead. So if you talk about the communication model NATS is obviously asynchronous and it's event driven as we saw and HTTP is basically request response by kind of thing it plays and it's a synchronous works as a synchronous manner. If we talk about the connection NATS work over a persistent connection between two services over a persistent connection while for HTTP we need to you know require acquire a new TCP connection for each new request so which is you know computationally expensive on the CPU and the RAM so I hope you understood the difference between message queues message broker and how the request response based uh, messaging system works if you got to learn something and go to learn the basic difference between these two uh, this is between these three uh, technologies out there drop a like let's target for 50 likes for this video and if you like my content, please consider subscribing. Let's target 2500 subscribers by the end of this month. I create this type of, you know, uh, in-depth tech content based on cloud computing and AI. So check out my channel. You will definitely like it. So if you have any doubts about whatever we discussed in this video, drop them in the comment section. I will be sure to answer them. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.